Here's the first thing that I saw at the trial. It's the reason for the title of my talk tonight. What we saw was the literal collapse of intelligent design as a scientific theory. Now, let me try to explain to you what I mean by that. One of the first things that intelligent design argues is that it is necessary to explain what we see in the fossil record, that the fossil record is a problem of one sort for evolution. You might hear people say that the fossil record doesn't support evolution. Well, the National Academy of Sciences only a few years ago basically said, look, there are so many intermediate forms between all these species that it's often difficult to identify categorically where the transition occurs from one species to another. In other words, there's so many transitional forms, we actually argue about this. Christine Janis, a friend of mine at Brown, who's a paleontologist, um, I once asked Christine, you know, what about this uh, business of no transitional forms? And she said, are you kidding? I just came back from a meeting where there were 11 or 12 new fossils from the Powder River Basin in Wyoming were being introduced, and almost fistfights broke out among the scientists arguing as to whether or not these fossils should be called mammal-like reptiles or reptile-like mammals. If, people are, if paleontologists are willing to argue about that, it tells you two things. One is paleontologists will argue about anything. And the second thing that it will tell you is that there are innumerable intermediate and transitional forms that we see in the fossil record. But I want to go a little bit further th than this. Um, one of the arguments that has often been made against evolution is that the fossil record doesn't have the intermediates that it ought to. For example, we've known for a long time that whales and dolphins evolved from terrestrial mammals. There are unmistakable marks in their genetics and in their skeleton of this. But critics of evolution have said, oh yeah? Well, you know, if they did, where are the intermediate forms? You know, put up or shut up. And in fact, I've even seen cartoons that looked a bit like this, ridiculing the notion that an intermediate could even exist between a land mammal and a swimming mammal. And the argument is that such animals would be so awkward on the land and so poor at swimming in the water that they really wouldn't be survivable. Well, the cartoons and the arguments started to disappear about 10 or 12 years ago when the very first skeletons of exactly such creatures were dug up. This is the skeleton of an organism which is now called Ambulocetus natans. And if your Latin is good, you'll know that Ambulocetus means the walking whale and natans means who swims. This is the walking whale who swims. It is a perfect intermediate form to plug right in the middle. So you might say, do we now have a true intermediate form? Not really. As it turns out, we have five intermediate forms that fill this gap, all discovered within the last two decades, precisely because paleontologists, when they found this guy, they figured out we know where to look. And where to look is in the Indus River Valley between India and Pakistan. That's where these creatures evolved, and that's where more intermediate fossils are found all the time. OK, so do evolutionists say, yay, we've solved the problem. Evolution is true. Darwin was right. No. Science is enormously self-critical. If this really happened, if this is a genuine evolutionary series, do you know what has to have happened along with it? The middle ear has to have been completely changed. And the reason for that is the middle ear that a land mammal, like us, has is very good for hearing in the air. If any of you have scuba dived or snorkeled, you know that your hearing stinks underwater. Your hearing is lousy. But the underwater hearing of these guys is sensational. It's so good they can use it as a form of sonar. That's because their middle ear structure is entirely different. So if this is real, we should be able to look at the middle ear structure of these fossils and see intermediate forms in which they're reshaped. And you know what? That's exactly what we see. This is a paper a year and a half ago from Nature dissecting a series of fossil skulls and showing exactly how the apparatus in the middle ear was remodeled through a whole series of intermediate forms to change from an apparatus that was good for hearing in the air to an apparatus that was intermediate to an apparatus that was terrific for hearing under the water. So the fossil record, the more we fill it in, the more complete it becomes and the more powerful it becomes as evidence for evolution.